Well, George Norrie broadcast on over 600 AM and FM stations across the United States. Of course, he's on XM Sirius and is arguably the number one or number two most listened to broadcast, uh, not just in the United States, but across the world. And I can attest to that. Uh, we are so blessed to have someone who's open-minded uh, to exposing the globalist and who promotes the Bill of Rights and Constitution uh, that reaches so many people. He also covers a lot of fun stuff and unsolved mysteries and things uh, on the broadcast as well. But I personally have experienced uh, the coast to coast AM dot com effect uh, when I'm out in the public. When I was down in Alpine and Big Bend last weekend, spending some time hiking around uh, the desert. I ran into a lot of listeners, and so many of them said, I learned about you with George Norrie. And I, when he comes on every three, four months, I always mention that because uh, we've got to be very thankful for the fact that George, 13, 14 years ago, when Coast to Coast AM and its other great host, legendary hosts like Art Bell, were not really getting into the New World Order, world government, global government, uh, RFID, smart meters, vaccines, cashless societies, George Norrie was. And boy, when he first had me on, it was on ABC News, CNN, C-SPAN, within a day that how dare him have Alex Jones on. And this was a frightening interview, and this was crazy. Because back then, no one would report that I'd snuck into Bohemian Grove. They even broke in Someone broke in and stole the tapes out of the British television network's hotel. I then mailed it not once, not twice, but three times to their L.A. studios at World of Wonder, and those tapes were erased. Erased. We finally mailed it to one of their homes, and they got them. Now imagine, they were saying this did not exist. How far we've come. Just yesterday, it was in Bloomberg and a bunch of other publications that indeed Citibank is going to make you retina scan to cash checks, get money, buy and sell, basically. And, and, and once they do that, you think Bank of America wanted to charge you $5 every time you use your ATM is bad or you use your debit card or credit card. It's going to get a lot worse. It'll track everything we do. It'll shut down underground economies. It is a nightmare scenario. And now it's here. And on hundreds of fronts, I want to open the phones up at the bottom of the hour. How many things did you hear on InfoWars or on Coast to Coast AM that were just outlandish and crazy 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago that are now admitted? They admit in army manuals now the FEMA camps. They now admit global government. They now admit forced inoculation. They now admit so much of this is out in the open. And we have the Southern Poverty Law Center, margins to the mainstream that demonize myself and others. And they say, we're crazy. We think they're coming after our guns. Well, they admit they are. We, we, we think there's a U.N. agenda to restrict energy. The U.N. has a target of cutting world energy consumption by half in the next 10 years. So they're really playing to folks' ignorance, but it doesn't work. That's why it's margins to the mainstream I want to ask George Norrie this question. I've asked him before, but I ask it again. Not for lack of news. We're in a sea of incredible news. And these aren't scripted interviews. I mean, I'm just coming at George with my questions because I respect what he has to say. What are we going to do as what we've covered becomes mainstream news? They admit this stuff's going on, but then still demonize us. It isn't working, though, because as they admit, margins to the mainstream, the system's being discredited, and those of us that were out in the wilderness are now being brought in by the people and being respected. That's quite a responsibility, but I don't know what the establishment's going to do. I mean, four years ago, George, you had myself on, others, you covered how our governments were arming al-Qaeda and then ISIS uh, and what really happened at Benghazi. You had that within weeks of it happening. So did I. Uh, almost no one else did. We're not bragging. It's just a fact that our perspective on the world is so much more accurate than what you call mainstream because they're there. I mean, I mean, ESPN wouldn't even report 
on Deflategate. Uh, that's one reason they're losing viewers. I mean, when it gets to a point where things are so sanitized, so controlled, what is the dinosaur media going to do? George Norrie. You know, Skype is such a wonderful thing, but I'm almost convinced we've got an internal Skype problem because we couldn't have Leanne on earlier, and now we can't have George on. So I want to go to telephones until we've uh, revamped, had some experts in. We've got the professional Skype system. We've had uh, consultants in, but I, I, I want to venture that uh, something's rotten in the state of Denmark. We do have George Norrie. We'll try one more time and then go to phone. Uh, George, hey. that was my big, long intro. Thank you for coming on with us. And, and I did hear your intro, then all of a sudden you were taken away from me, Alex. Very strange. Somebody's <laughs> watching your feed, my friend. No, no, it's probably just the Internet. But seriously, George, I mean, the big question, what is the establishment going to do now that everything they say is basically taken as pure bull? Well, let me tell you what's been going on. Uh, since we've been doing this for 13 years and you've been doing this even longer, Things have fallen right into our lap. Social networking has exploded. The internet has exploded. As you said, I'm on 600 plus radio stations around North America. All those things have come into each other and they continue to grow. And so what I think they are facing is the knowledge that they simply can't stop this anymore. Well, they probably could have stopped it a long time ago. They can't stop it anymore. It's gotten too big. And now they just have to ride it out with us. And they are petrified that we are bringing the truth out to the public. And people are beginning to realize we're not going to take it anymore. We are fed up with getting a spoon-fed story from either a mainstream media or from government. And... They're going to investigate themselves now. And now with the alternative media and programs like Coast to Coast and what you do, Alex, on InfoWars and Prison Planet, people get their information immediate, fast, and very, very accurate. And that's what's beginning to happen. And those power brokers can't stop it anymore. And now they're trying to figure out how do we work within that system. And that's what they're trying to figure out. What are you focused on right now? Well, right now we're, uh, besides doing ghost to ghost this Friday on Halloween and having some fun, we are looking at just about everything that's been going on. Uh, as you just mentioned, the uh, Citibank is going to experiment with uh, retina and, and eyes for ATMs. I think Diebold, the great black box voting company, is going to make the, the ATM machines and, and market those. Um, that's, that's an amazing, so we're looking at that story. We're handling a lot of things that are going on internationally. Uh, we are concerned about what's going on between the United States and China, you know, with the ships getting closer to what they call territorial waters. There's just, there's something going on here and the economy still is not as robust as people think or say, uh, because we still see a lot of people unemployed Retail sales are still marginal, and, you know, there's a lot of concern about what's going on. Our, our EI stores just yesterday announced they're not going to open up on Black Friday. Uh, they've told their employees, hey, take Thursday off, take Thanksgiving off, take Friday off. We're not going to do it. So lots of things are going on. We're, we're looking at everything. As, as you know, Coast to Coast was primarily the paranormal show, the UFO show, and you can't just do that anymore. There are way too many things going on that cut to the chase of what we're going through as people that we have to handle. As you mentioned, the vaccines, the political system. There's the big debate today in Boulder, Colorado. We can talk about that and some of our thoughts on the presidential election. But we are looking at everything that's going on on this planet right now because you have to. For us as talk show hosts, we would be irresponsible if we just dabbled with the fluff and didn't get into the meat of what's And boy, there's plenty of meat, and I'm glad you raised the China situation because that is so big. I haven't even been covering that enough because it's just so over the top. It, it's hard to analyze. China, as you know, fired a sea launch missile from a submarine a few years ago off the coast. The media tried to spin it and say it wasn't a missile. 
There's the headline, mystery missile launch off coast of California caught on tape near Los Angeles. It later leaked right. from the Pentagon that it was the communist Chinese and a threat. They've been coming into the California and the Alaskan territorial waters. And then those are our waters. China, and I've talked to a lot of experts, they don't have a claim to the Spratly area. They are building artificial islands. They are claiming they control that South China Sea area. This is a power grab. And our government does a lot of power grabs too, but uh, you know, when they're in the wrong, they're in the wrong in my view. You were a naval officer, you, you know, not just a, a TV award winning, uh, what Emmy award winning uh, reporter, but from Great your time. expertise, from your expertise, um, what do you think's going on with this China situation? I mean, they're now, as you know, threatening military action. This is escalating. Well, China, as you know, they are our biggest debt holders. I mean, they have well over $4 trillion in debt that they own. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, if you lent money to somebody, Alex, that uh, you'd want anything to happen to them uh, because they become a debt holder. And you know eventually, hey, you'll get paid and everything will be fine. In this situation with China, if China goes to war with us or we go to war with them, that's going to be an economic disaster for them. So they're tippy-toeing around the situation. There's no question China is flexing its muscles. It wants these islands that the Philippines claim might be theirs. It wants islands that the Japanese say belong to them. Uh, I think China has its eyes on Taiwan. Uh, are we going to go to war over Taiwan, even though we've promised the Taiwanese will step in and bail you out if something happens. Lots of things are going on, but I think you're right. I think China is flexing its muscles and they're pushing and they're trying to push and see how far can we push before the United States tries to push back. Well, we're playing these little games as we do with the Russians, close flybys and things like that. What concerns me is that mistakes happen. We've seen it before, it's happened then, it'll happen in the future. Military makes mistakes. Planes do something wrong, they go off course. Anything could happen to trigger what could very well be a third world war. If you look at what's happening around the world right now and the tensions everywhere, from Syria to Israel to where the Palestinians are, there's, there's too much going on right now. and. What a better way to put it all together than a third world war and something's going on. I feel it. I hope it doesn't happen, but I think we need to be ready for this. Well, undoubtedly, you were on with us two years ago, a year ago, six months ago, and said everybody you talk to feels this ominous tick-tock towards something so bigger. Hard. It's now reached a crescendo. We've got proxy wars with Russia, proxy wars in Syria, the West caught backing the bad guys in the Middle East. Uh, communist China uh, moving into Africa, uh, controlling 96% of rare earth minerals. I'm not really worried about Russia. They're not expanding, in my view. It's China I'm worried about. I'm not romanticizing our government either. But when you talk about censorship, the communist Chinese government is heavily involved in what Hollywood puts out now. They won't accept movies to their market unless it's been pre-approved, like The Martian, where the That's Chinese right. basically save our space program and not the Russians. It's just crazy to see Chinese communist propaganda involved in American politics. I bet the Chinese loved the Martian movie in that segment when the Chinese did come and bail us out and saved, uh, saved Matt Damon. Uh, you know, common sense tells you that uh, another world war would be catastrophic for the entire planet. There are too many countries that have nukes right now and uh, they have that capability of using them uh, from North Korea to Pakistan to India to Israel to China to us to Russia too many nations have the capability of destroying this planet and it just takes one lunatic to do this I forgot North Korea you talk about lunatics the, that guy's capable of doing anything so we are surrounded by, by this craziness it's just crazy. You know, as Howard Beale said in the movie network that you so eloquently quoted uh, in Toronto when we were there, you know, people are mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore because the world has gone crazy. And I'm in St. Louis right now. I'm down in my bunker studio and I can sense.